After the shooting death of 32-year-old Philando Castile, new details are emerging about what happened before and after the horrific scene unfolded live on the Internet. Oh, my God, please don't tell me he's dead. It was 9.05 at night when two officers with the St. Anthony Police Department pull over an Oldsmobile in Falcon Heights, Minnesota. Inside that car, Castile, his fiancée, Diamond Reynolds, and her four-year-old daughter. The police officer stopped us for a busted taillight that was not busted. But the attorney for Officer Geronimo Yanez says he stopped Castile because he fit the description of an armed robbery suspect. In fact, just days prior, this crime alert was sent to area police informing them of that robbery. The robbery happened a mile from where Castile was stopped, which, according to his attorney, gave Officer Yanez, quote, a reasonable suspicion to take further investigative steps. What happened next is unclear, but we now know Castile had been pulled over by police at least 52 times since 2002 and obtained a concealed carry permit in 2015. A point Diamond Reynolds makes just seconds after Castile is shot while she live streams the scene on Facebook. He's licensed to carry. He was trying to get out his ID and his wallet out his um, pocket, and he let the officer know that he was re he had a firearm and he was reaching for his wallet, and the officer just shot him in his arm. But Officer Yanez says he warned him. I told him not to reach for it. I told him to get his hand off it. Officer Yanez's attorney says Castile did not follow instructions during the stop, saying, quote, there was a gun produced by Mr. Castile. He would not comply with the commands of Mr. Yanez. As authorities investigate, there are also new questions about what happened after Diamond Reynolds stopped recording. It's okay. I'm not here with you. Authorities brought Reynolds to the police station. They took me off the scene. I was not allowed to talk to anybody. And up until 5 o'clock this morning when they dropped wow. me off on my doorstep. Wow. But in an interview with CNN's Rosa Flores, Roseville's police chief defends his responding officer's actions. So she wasn't held all night. She was held for just about two hours. Authorities say Reynolds was dropped off at her home at 1 in the morning. And still, so many questions remain about what exactly happened in that one minute, just 60 seconds from the time authorities say they made that traffic stop to when Reynolds started streaming live on Facebook. Some of that may be clear when we see that dash cam video, which is now part of that criminal investigation, which we're hearing will take months to complete. Aaron? All right, Bryn, thank you very much. And crucial because we don't have the dash cam video. At this point, there's a lot of uh, what someone alleges, but some crucial new pieces of information. Harry Hawk is a retired NYPD detective. Paul Martin, criminal defense attorney who has re represented police officers in shooting cases. Thanks to both. Harry, let me start with you. Um, we have this, this video, which we all have to admit is disturbing and upsetting and, 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 and a death that should not have happened. The question, though, of course, is motive and, um, and whether there was racial bias, okay? Uh, the officer's defense is there was an armed robbery about a mile away from where this uh, tragedy happened. Correct. He says that he thought Castile fit the description of this robber. Mm -hmm. uh, that obviously would have been something that would have happened before this tape started rolling, before anything right. that any of us have seen. Is that enough to explain what happened? Well, I'll explain the stop. Basically, when a police officer has reason to believe that there's a suspect in a vehicle who fits the description of an armed robbery suspect, he does have reason to stop the vehicle. Now, what happened was when that police officer approached that vehicle, now I'm, I'm telling you from what's going through my head as a police officer when I stop a, a robbery suspect. Going up to the vehicle and he states that he has a gun and that he's got a, a permit for that gun. Now, remember, he's just telling me that. I don't know if he's really got a permit to carry that weapon or not. Now, as a police officer, if you tell me that you've got a, a, a permit to carry a weapon, I'm supposed to disarm you. You are not supposed to forget a weapon. So the officer said that he asked him for his identification. Then the officers had said in the video, I told him not to go for the gun. I told him not to reach, all right? Now, if that police officer thinks at that time, all right, when right, I'm telling you, say, give I'm, me your ID, but don't reach, but you got to reach then. Yeah, but you don't know which one was first, which one was second. We don't know. Okay. Okay. So, so, if, so if he says, you know, let me see your ID then he's going to reach, the police officer's not going to shoot him. That, but once he told the officer he's got a gun, the officer's got to tell him, keep your hands where I can see him. And if I tell you several times to do that and you start moving, okay. the officer's got to protect but, himself. But, uh, Paul, you don't does know any... what was said. 
No, you we don't, don't know. I didn't say. All right. And what we do know is this. Even assuming that uh, the officer stopped him because he thought he was a robbery suspect, what was the description? I can tell you what the description was. Male black, between the ages of 25 and 35. Hair, cornrows. Well, you don't know that. Just like I didn't right. know uh, what the police officer said. What was the description? Right. The only thing that we do know is mm -hmm. that this man was stopped how many times? 52, 52 times. 52 times. Doesn't that sound somewhat unusual? Here we are also in a state well, where you're allowed, excuse stuff. me, sir. Here we are in a state where he's allowed to carry a weapon. He has a permit. You're assuming what the officer said is accurate. I may assume what the woman said was accurate, mm -hmm. that he was asked to reach for his wallet. He complied. Right. And when he complied, he plus, was shot. Plus, well, if, see, he really, been... if he really is the armed robbery suspect or he has a malintent towards the police officer, right. okay? So let's just, just say that if that's the case. And your gun's concealed. Why would you say that? The minute you said you had it, you shouldn't the police know. officer have felt First less of threatened? All, you never know what anybody's going to tell you out there on the street. You've got to protect yourself as a police officer. He, he says he, he has a gun. Yes, I know he tells him that. But you see in the video where the officer's got the gun after he shot him, and he says, I told him not to reach for it. I told him not to reach for it. All right? That's what the officer says. And, and it's in the heat of the moment after he just shot somebody. I don't think the officer's lying there. We're hearing it from his mouth. Now, she, her credibility is now shot. The fact that, that she said she was stayed in the hot, at, at the police station for she so said six hours, morning, so six five o'clock in the morning, the police chief says it was two hours. Right, exactly. So, so her credibility is shot. That goes to her credibility. That you know, goes to her she credibility. also said the reason why they were stopped, sorry, Paul, but the reason why they were stopped is because there was a broken taillight. She knows he was stopped. Because that's what credibility. they were told. Okay, that's go what ahead, she Paul. Was, Does that's this what hurt her credibility told. that no, she said it, it was five, six hours when it was two? That, that same reasoning goes for a woman who sits there and sees her loved one get a bullet put in him and she sees her loved one dying in front of her, what was her basis to lie at that point? She's there videoing exactly what transpired. And she says, you told him to reach. And she's so it. upset, perhaps, Harry, she doesn't even keep track of time. Well, it felt like hours. She's what distraught. First is the problem is she's... we don't know. You know, she's so distraught, she was able to videotape the whole thing. Well, we live in a, we live in a Facebook world. Everybody's know, vid videotaping that. everything. You know, she, she is so distraught. You know, she, she had the, the forethought to go and videotape the whole thing and make this whole comment while it was going on. Listen, I'm not saying what this police officer did right or, or what he did was wrong. We still need to know the facts in this case. And uh, these are, they're getting a little piece at a time here. So, so Paul, a final, a final question to you. The body cam video, we don't know what's going to be on it, but let's just say it has the whole beginning. It has exactly what he asked for and when he asked for it. Is there any scenario that could have played out before this video that would make you change your mind and say that this is an understandable event? The officer happened? has to believe, and this is going to, this is a test. Yeah. The officer has to believe yeah. that his life is in danger. And, and but for him actually seeing this individual go to grab for something, yeah. He's going to have a problem. He's going to have a problem saying, "How could I believe that my he was, was my danger. life was in danger yeah. when oh he went for his wallet?" That's a problem. All right, that Thank I agree you. with. All right, well, thanks to both, and obviously that's going to be crucial. But as